Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton from my house to yours. Welcome to EMS at Sea Level. Today I'm with Valentin Stores, who is General Manager for Europe for Nano Dimension. Valentin, thanks for joining me again. Um, I think last time we did this was a, a full year ago. We were just heading towards Productronica and you just acquired a Semtech. Tell me what's been going on in the last 12 months with you. I think uh, the last time we talked, uh, we were just on the verge of uh, growing our business activities in the mm-hmm. EMS segment and acquiring SMTech. And uh, since then, a lot of things happened. So uh, we are, I would say we are progressing uh, on our vision to change how the world is manufacturing. And uh, the, the vision is uh, digital inventory. Uh, a cleaner, smarter, and faster way of producing electronics and, and other products because electronics is only a part of a product. And uh, with, the, with the promises of reducing time to market, reducing assembly steps or enabling new functionalities, uh, lighter uh, and uh, using the ability of uh, free routing uh, any shape vias in free form factors, allowing for heterogeneous integration and, and higher packaging density. Okay. So I, I think um, to, 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 to give an overview of what, what Nano Dimension is doing actually, um, at the time of the Electronica show, we also exhibiting at the Formlex show. And that's interesting mm-hmm. because those are the two worlds. The Formex show is the show of additive manufacturing, or mainly the mechanical segment. And the Electronica is because our uh, origin is from the electronics world. But in the end, we are we are looking at uh, new designs of hardware in, in general that include electronics, but they also include mechanical parts. And here, the things are merging together. And, and we can see that it's merging together also because of the cut technologies. So uh, leading uh, EDA eCard solutions are starting to include 3D features and, and starting to be able to model for um, uh, 3D electronics. Um, and this is very interesting for us because uh, most of the other uh, technology features that we can offer are only coming out when you are able to design in 3D. Uh, yeah. Let me give you an example. Um, we could uh, produce easily twisted pairs in, in, in a PCB as part of the PCB material. However, you will need to design for that. Or we could easily implement by 3D printing uh, a coax structure into mm-hmm. a PCB or, or uh, the, 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 the 3D PCB. But you need to design for it. And uh, this is in combination with educating the market and having a new generation of designers, one of our biggest challenges. Mm, yeah. so when, I think when you that's, see... the, that's the Sorry. fascinating thing. It's how you, how you educate the market and how you get them used to that. And I think, the, to me, one of the only ways to do that is case studies and understanding which industries are are keen to adopt this technology and are, and, and are actually seeing the, the value and benefit. Are there particular markets that you think are prime markets for the um, additive manufacturing of electronics? Um, everything that is uh, uh, relatively light and small and integrated. So if, mm-hmm. if you draw a chart where you have on the, on the y-axis the price for something and on the x axis the weight for something uh, then everything that is um, has a high dollar per kilogram ratio mm-hmm. and is relatively light is something that will benefit from this technology something that is pretty big and and, and bulky and, and, and relatively cheap uh, will not benefit from this technology and there's yeah. also a correlation that the things that are typically uh, small and, and expensive are high mix, low volume products. And the things that are produced in high quantities are typically cheaper because you have yeah. economies of scale, things are yeah. going down. And the uh, additive manufacturing allows to um, challenge this economies of scale because 
for, for us, there is no optimal lot size. You, you have yeah. the same cost. Uh, literally, if you produce one ten or one million, because the the process the serial. is yeah, yeah. So the the industries would come from fields of uh, aerospace defense, medical applications, um, and in the end, uh, applications can come from every area. Whenever we are able to to cut down the the assembly process, so saying yeah. at the moment uh, you have uh, the PCB, the PCBA, you order the components, then you uh, you box it. Uh, this box will go into several other assembly steps, and in the end, maybe a car or an airplane or a medical device will come out. Mm. However, there could be examples such as. Uh, hearing aids or miniature drones. Mm -hmm. um, this could be, if if our vision is is uh, executed, produced in one machine. So you, yeah. you cut away a lot of the assembly steps, and you are able to disrupt a technology. And that happened in in some industries already. And we believe that this can also happen in uh, complex products that have. Uh, electronic components in it yeah and i as as i said before i think actually letting people know about all those opportunities is is really exciting as i also mentioned it was a uh, around about a year ago that you acquired a Sen a semtech talk a little bit to me about how that integration has gone and what that adds to nano dimensions offering to the marketplace yeah that, that's an excellent question so, so for, for me as a German uh, working with a Swiss company, uh, we might share the same language, but it, mm -hmm. it brings new challenges. No, uh, it, it works excellent. And uh, I think we have very complementary skills and, and, and cultures that are coming together. And we will showcase at the Electronica show uh, on in hall B1, stand 507, um, a complete solution with the non-dimension Dragonfly 4 system and an SMTX Fox multi-functional system with pick and place and, and dispensing unit. And this is basically allowing with only two machines to have a full electronics production, including the PCB or the, the high pad when, when it's a yeah. 3D structure produced on the Dragonfly 4. Then we will take it to the SMTX Fox where with silver conductive glue the board is prepared and then the components are added we just need to uh, uh, cure it for i think 90 degrees mm -hmm. and then you have uh, a fully functional electronic prototype that could be a board with 50 layers or a high pad that is a 3d integrated device with only two machines in your lab without the need of uh, wet chemicals or etching or electroplating mm -hmm. uh, yeah. without any waste because we only put material where it's needed so you have a full start to finish manufacturing process live at the show yeah uh, yes so so we will we will showcase that so uh, yeah. you will be able to, to see how this is actually working and we believe this gives the power of um, rapid prototyping and generating new ideas to designers. So okay. uh, in, in the mechanical world, uh, designers are already able to go, I don't know, to their 3D printer, uh, test their first design and iterate faster. And uh, it, it allows you to do even a few designs and then compare which design is the best one without having the need to go to your assembly downstairs, to your production or to an external shop. Yeah. And we believe this will be the, the first in the world solution where if, if you are running an, uh, an electronic design department, you could have a lab where you have those two machines and you can start to rapid prototype your design, just need to source the components and then produce it overnight and test it the next day. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing that. Last question before we wrap up, Valentin. The the market's been constantly disrupted for the last three years. It was trade wars, pandemics, most recently component shortages. We seem to be heading into somewhat of an economic disruption. How are you seeing the market at the moment and how confident are you feeling about Electronica and 2023? Uh, I think it hasn't, uh, it, it was never so challenging to forecast what, what is happening mm. because the uh, pot potential results that can come up uh, are dramatic. Uh, I, I can tell you when, when forecasting the last year, I didn't expect a uh, war in Ukraine. Uh, I didn't mm. expect an energy crisis and I didn't expect uh, that much of component shortage. Um, so in let's say we will face operational challenges and we, we are addressing them. Uh, but most of the things that, that we are doing and uh, we, we have enough fuel to execute on the, on the visionary plans mm -hmm. uh, is about how to disrupt production, electronic production on, on the midterm. So uh, we are investing despite uncertainties significantly in process development, in material development, in system development, in all the areas. Um, so, for example, we also acquired this year a company that is called GIS, Global Inkjet Systems, that is delivering um, uh, printhead control boards, uh, ink delivery systems and software to 3D printers, but, but also to other machines that could be, I don't know, in the dispensing field, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and the founder of this company, Nick, became now CTO of Nano Dimension and can help us to bring this all together. Uh, okay. Additionally, we invested and acquired a company in the Netherlands, Atmatech Formatech, which is specializing in 3D printing of metals and ceramics. So, for example, alumina and copper. And uh, we, we will continue to invest in organic and inorganic growth. And that's because um, we will execute on our vision to change how the world is manufactured. And yes, there will be short term challenges and we might not get uh, everything immediately that, that we wish for, but we are confident in executing on our long term vision. And we are grateful that we are able to, to do that. Yeah, and it's great to be agile in these circumstances. And when you look at a world that's constantly disrupted, it makes sense to be the disruptor. Um, so I think you're in. I think you're in an exciting position, Valentin. I look forward to meeting up with you in Munich. Thanks so much for chatting to me today, and um, I look forward to talking again soon. Thank you. <laughs>